rates of poverty in America. This morning we're visiting Boston, where the high cost of housing and heat have many families cutting back on food. Deb Farrick with part two of her special report. Good morning. You know, you were saying earlier that we often forget it, um, it, it's right here in our backyard, right? Well, that's right? exactly right. That's exactly right. We tend to think about malnourished children being in other countries, places like Africa, Somalia, but we don't really have to go that far to look for children who are hungry. <laughs> Looking at Juven's Lewis, you would never guess this playful first grader suffers from chronic malnutrition. You ready? Yay! His mom, Rolande de Casa, earns less than $10,000 a year at her part time job. And even though the single mom gets help from food stamps, she still worries constantly about not having enough to eat. I'm shaking. <laughs> shaking head like crazy. You know, number one thing, you got to take care of the house. But I said I have to see how we, I'm going to buy food for my kids. <laughs> Figures show nationwide more than 16 million children like Juvens live in homes with parents struggling to put enough food on the table. Hi, Juvens. Dr. Megan Sandell treats Juvens at Boston Medical Center's unique Grow Clinic, which specializes in treating underweight and malnourished children. Step right on the scale. 37.2 pounds. Six-year-old Juvens currently weighs as much as an average four-year-old. People think about acute malnutrition and they may look at Somalia or something like that. What we see is chronic malnutrition, stunted growth, kids that are the size of a one-year-old when they're two years old. And that they're not going to be able to be able to make up for the rest of their lives. Emergency rooms in Boston are seeing a spike in severely underweight children ages five and younger, a crucial period for brain growth and child development. These kids are more likely to get sick and fall behind in school. All right, so where do I go next? Sorry. Pediatrician Deborah Frank runs the Grow Clinic and sees as many as 40 children a week. Some kids, it's pretty obvious. You can count their ribs, their le arms and legs look skinny. Their heads look too big. The scary thing is that even when you refeed kids and get them going again and get them physically growing, that you can often find deficits in learning and behavior all the way into high school. And what else has he learned? In other cities like Baltimore and Minneapolis, many doctors say the numbers of malnourished kids have doubled in the last two years because of the recession. Boston's Grow Clinic opened a pantry where doctors now write prescriptions for food. We thought we were going to serve 500 families a month, and we last month served 7,500 families. And so you can imagine, we're handing out over 70,000 bags of food every single month. More than 40 million people received food stamps in the summer of 2010, a record high. Some in Congress are now talking about cuts in that and other nutrition programs. It's sort of like somebody saying, we're about to have a plague epidemic, so the government is cutting back on immunizations and antibiotics to save money just as the plague is hitting. And so a lot of advocates really believe that lawmakers are going to have to decide whether to keep funding food stamps and other nutrition programs and be proactive to help children get the right start or whether in fact they're not and children are going to fall behind, develop problems that will cost even more in the long room, emergency room visits, longer hospitalizations, school dropout, unemployment, all that. And so that's what you know, these doctors that we spoke to, they really said if you can get a child on the right path, and we're not even talking in the mid-range, they want to get them simply you know, in the lowest range because they've fallen so far, that it will do a lot to get these kids at least push them forward. You know, interestingly, it's the, it's the same on the other side when you look at children who are obese or overweight. You know, it's, it's the, question, the big question is, do you help them now or do you pay later? Uh, and, and it seems to be the case with this as well. Absolutely. What's so interesting about obesity, and the doctor that you heard there, Deborah Fang, she said that one of the problems, she'll see mothers with children in the emergency room, in the hospital, and the mothers are giving the children French fries and soda. Why? Because carbohydrates and bubbles fill up the belly mm. so that those children feel Full because they can't afford foods that we take for granted so that sad. simply cost yeah, more. Yeah, it's a quick fix. But yeah, it's, it's a not quick the right fix, but yeah. it's a bad fix. Yeah. All right. Exactly. Thank you so much, Deb Farrick. Up next, actress and actor.